I'm very happy and honored now to pass the floor to Ambassador Dunlop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm already wearing my button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, indeed, uh, I would like to commend Ilga for the initiative of organizing uh, this event here today. Maybe not to celebrate, but to mark the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. And uh, as for Brazil, we are particularly thankful uh, to you, Ilga, for having you know, distinguished us with this possibility. And uh, I take this distinction together with Colombia, Chile, and Uruguay, because we've been working together uh, in the uh, Human Rights Council. On this, uh, on this matter, and I think uh, at this moment uh, will have to be shared with them. Um, we welcome, of course, um, the, the theme for this year's International Day, which is LGBTIQ youth, and uh, there is already this media statement, which I, I'm sorry I haven't read yet, but uh, will you know, be soon uh, digested by me and my uh, delegation. And we also take note with appreciation of the 10th edition of the report of, um, uh, produced by Yuga on discriminatory laws against individuals on the basis of their sexual orientation. Uh, Brazil has been a supporter uh, of this initiative uh, because we think it is an important source uh, of information on the legal status of the human rights related to sexual orientation. It is, in fact, I think, a tool for all of us uh, to promote and protect these rights. So uh, thank you, Ilga, for this production. Thank you, Angus. Uh, I, I, I don't uh, think it is you know, ever too much to refer back to the Vienna Declaration and program of action, which is now over 20 years, but it's still you know, a, a, a very valid reference in the terms that uh, respect for human rights and for fundamental freedoms without a distinction of any kind is a fundamental rule of international human rights law, and we should abide to this. Um, however, um, as pointed out by Mona and um, you know, by you, uh, we, we still find that discrimination and violence based on sexual orientation and gender identity is a challenge that faced, you know, unfortunately, by all countries in the world and in all regions, including my region and my own country. And by, you know, admitting that, I'm not, um, you know, in a way uh, agreeing to all this, but on the contrary, um, saying that we are very committed to recognizing and moving ahead. This is what moves Brazil. And it is important that in moving ahead, in moving forward, dialogue all the times and engagement. You mentioned activists, very, very important because they are um, as if, you know, feeding us uh, in terms of producing sorry, producing input for public policies and in a way encouraging, uh, you know, national authorities to go ahead and uh, be more adamant in their, um, you know, actions. So if we admit there are challenges and we are prepared to face them, we also have to admit and be proud of progress that has been made so far. And according to Ilga's report, in 2006, there were 92 countries which still criminalized same-sex sexual acts between consenting adults. And in 2015, this number has dropped down to 76. It's not much. We would uh, like to have more, but we have to you know, acknowledge there has been uh, some progress in this. So um, when we look back, um, there is, you know, uh, ground to rejoice, but there is, I think, more motivation to go ahead. And it is important that we get together and unite 
our forces, energies, and actions internationally in the multilateral fora and national wise to repeal laws that criminalize individuals on the grounds of sexual orientation and as well to enact comprehensive anti-discrimination legislation. There is also a need, and Mona mentioned it, to implement and support public information campaigns. It is also, it's not just legislation. Of course, legislation is important to build up a framework within which we're going to work. But it is very important that we act on the attitudes of people and, uh, you know, the social, um, to say, way of uh, thinking and, uh, and approaching, um, you know, these individuals. And uh, we um, are sure that uh, raising awareness about the importance of the principles of equality and non-discrimination within society is absolutely key. In Brazil, I'm, I'm sorry, but we are very proud of this, and I have to refer you know, to my own country. Uh, we are not there at the top, very top yet, but uh, for example, in 2008, we held a national conference on the promotion of the rights and, and LGBT uh, individuals, which was a groundbreaking conference, followed by a second conference in uh, 2011. And, and by uh, promoting you know, these gatherings, these national gatherings, uh, we were able to establish in 2011 a national council to fight discrimination about LGBT persons. Just to illustrate um, you know, how together we are working with civil society in promoting these rights. And since 2008, Brazil has provided transsexual individuals with free access to sex reassignment surgery at the Brazilian public health system. And last January the 29th, this year, we, um, I'm not going to say celebrate, but we had <laughs> a day to mark uh, the trans visibility, which is, you know, to uh, uh, raise awareness of uh, the population to this. Um, something else which I think is, you know, very important is that our national census in 2010 started already documenting for the first time the number of self-declared LGBT couples in Brazil. And also, in 2011, uh, in a milestone decision, the Brazilian Supreme Court ruled that the government must recognize same-sex civil unions. And in 2012, the National Council of Justice approved a resolution establishing civil marriage for LGBT couples. Well, this is, as you see, an incremental effort, and we go, you know, um, gradually, as I said, uh, building up on what we achieved. And in 2013, it was established the national system for promoting the rights and combating violence against LGBT. Now, this system uh, aims at collecting data, coordinating efforts to prevent violence in a, in a very transparent but also participatory way. We want you know, the population to be part of it and to work on it. But um, uh, you know, this uh, internal um, progress of which we are very proud wouldn't have been possible if it were not for action within multilateral system, in the multilateral system. And uh, here I mention the human right, the UN human rights system as a whole, and in particular, uh, the, Council, uh, the, the Human Rights Council. And yet, uh, if we agree that even in the Council, it's still, you know, a work in progress, we have to admit we have already uh, collected a few, um, you know, as Mona and uh, uh, Ricardo uh, said before, um, Robert Renato. Renato, I'm sorry. <laughs> Renato said before, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, um, already attained, um, you know, some progress. And uh, 
this progress would, uh, and I will list very briefly to you, just for you to have an idea that it is an incremental work that's building up gradually. We had resolution 1719, which was presented by Brazil and South Africa in 2011. Then we had the High Commissioner's Report in the same year, and the panel held in 2012 in the Council. Now, in the aftermath of Resolution 1819, a series of regional seminars were organized in 2013 in Paris, in Kathmandu, Brasilia, and Oslo, which was you know, a cross-regional movement collecting information and mobilizing people. The results were very encouraging, and in fact, they invited us to go ahead and do more nationally and multilaterally. To the point <coughs> that last September, during the 27th session of the Human Rights Council, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, and Uruguay got together, and we presented resolution 2732, which was adopted with the support of states from all regions. It's very important to you know, emphasize that this support came from all regions. It was not just, it was a Latin American initiative, I would say a South American initiative, more to say, but it got support from different regions. And um, uh, um, the text of this resolution while it recognizes positive developments at international, regional, and national levels, it also expresses grave concern. So the dual uh, track is always there. We acknowledge uh, we, what we have achieved, but we want to move forward and express grave concern of acts of violence and discrimination in all regions of the world committed against individuals because of their sexual orientation and gender identity. Well, as a result of this resolution, the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights, with the help of, important help of the office, will present a report uh, in this next session of the Council with a view to share existing good practices and ways to overcome this scourge. And uh, in order to discuss the findings of this report, the core group, the four uh, South American countries, we are going uh, to organize a side event, and um, it is being planned to happen on the 11th of June, but uh, in case there is a change, we'll inform you all. Uh, a week before the beginning of the 29th session, and we would like to count on your presence uh, on the occasion to you know, uh, move this discussion forward. Um, it is also important to stress that on a larger scale uh, within the UN uh, human rights system and with the UN uh, system as a whole, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon uh, has just confirmed a decision it was recently a decision that the United Nations would recognize all same-sex marriages of our staff, allowing them to receive UN benefits. Now, what can we do uh, as member states here in Geneva? What could be a more Geneva uh, active role? Well, we have a few uh, that occurred to me, but of course this discussion to take place on the 11th of June could bring about more ideas. One thing that uh, we thought and that uh, Brazil has been using uh, systematically is the Universal Periodical Review. This has occurred to us because it's taking place now, and today, for example, this morning, we just made recommendations along this line. We think it is an excellent opportunity uh, for you know, bringing awareness and calling uh, state's attention to the fact that they could be doing simpler things internally. And these recommendations uh, would, I think, uh, have an effect if taken by our community here. We would also um, uh, encourage 
existing special procedures and treaty bodies to continue to report and make recommendations on human rights violations affecting individuals on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. I think, uh, you know, um, the you know, human rights system as a whole, taking, you know, special procedures and treaty bodies have a very strong voice in pointing out, you know, uh, challenges, but also uh, in bringing uh, countries, um, you know, more united in this um, fight. And as members, of course, of the Human Rights Council, we have this responsibility to continue to address discrimination and violence based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And uh, we should, uh, um, you know, join efforts to promote and um, uh, indeed uh, uh, work harder to continue the Council's leadership in mapping and identifying ways and means to give visibility and address this issue. Finally, uh, we are convinced that internally in Brazil, all these measures have been taken uh, in a very uh, democratic and participatory way because they have to be legitimate. They have to count on popular uh, support. So um, we would encourage uh, all the work of the council to be inclusive and have an incremental approach so that in our view, it would be more effective. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I'd like to take the occasion also to uh, send you the personal greetings from uh, your fellow Brazilian, Lucas Pauli Tavorai, who is the co-author together with uh, Angus Carroll of the, of the state-sponsored homophobia report.